Hey everyone, my name is Ben Cheish, and I've been doing a, a bunch of reviews of the kind of like Seven Artisans and TT Artisan Leica M mount lenses lately. Um, and one of the biggest questions that I continually get over and over and over is about calibration for them. So I thought I'd make a quick video. I kind of have it set up as a live stream, uh, even though it's not actually live, but. Um, I keep getting, yeah, lots of questions about this. Um, so I figured I would show you kind of the process. So if you are thinking about doing it and, and picking up one of these lenses, you at least know sort of what you're getting yourself into. Now I have a digital Leica camera and that is by far the easiest way. If you have access to a digital rangefinder and the rangefinder is already calibrated, then you're kind of good to go. It'll take you like three minutes. You basically take the camera, you know, whatever it is, stick the lens on there, and then you go from like three feet ish away um, at, I don't know what the angle is specifically. It says it on the, the focus tab thing here. Um, and you just, you know, photograph the thing in that direction. You figure out where you're at. Um, and then it will tell you on here, like, let's say you were focused to here, which, you know, you're back focusing, then it says five millimeter anti-clockwise adjustment. So what you have to do is in the box that, you know, all these lenses come in, you have, um, you know, these focus charts. And so it says to do it at about a 30 degree angle, um, from two meters away. So a 30 degree angle, two meters away, that's about, you know, six feet ish. So generally, if you haven't seen one of these, you can kind of like, you know, notice what they're trying to get you to do here. And then you take this little screwdriver here. As soon as you get it out of the package, <laughs> you gotta be smarter than the plastic bench. So you take it out of the package, you take the lens off the body. And since this one's already calibrated, I, I just got this in yesterday. Um, this one's already calibrated, so we're kind of good to go. But you have these few different screws here, and I can actually zoom in. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Yep, there you go. So I'll switch hands because I'm right-handed, and this will be a lot easier. So you get this little tool, these tiny little screws here. All you have to do, honestly, is just undo these screws. Uh, uh, uh. Trying to do things on camera is always awkward. And then this just rotates. So I have this kind of lined up almost with this other screw right here. And so you honestly, it's super easy to rotate this thing around. Um, and then once you kind of get it where you're at, you screw all the screws back down until they're tight-ish. And then th the best thing to do, honestly, is to do this on a tripod. Um, I know not everyone sort of has like, well, most people should have probably have a tripod from, you know, even a cheap one from Walmart or something. Uh, but for me, I've just kind of like eyeballed it, um, checked to see where I thought focus was and everything like that, and then just kind of popped on live view and then just kind of confirmed, you know, back and forth a bunch of times. So it made it really, really easy. So if you have a digital Leica, that part is honestly like a piece of cake. So if you have access to an M240 uh, or an M10 or any of those kind of variations, you're kind of good to go. The problem is if you're with an M9, <laughs> that or an M8, I guess, like those view or those uh, back LCD panels are just so bad. You're probably gonna have to like, you know, do some work in there. Um, but the hack that I've seen for a film camera is much, much more difficult. I mean, the thing is like I have an EOS R with, you know, so I have a lot of questions about mirrorless cameras too. Like, can you use it on a mirrorless camera? Um, you can use it on a mirrorless camera without calibrating. That should be no problem unless the calibration is so far off that you can't reach infinity. So I don't see that being a really big issue for people, but you know, like 
if if you do, then you can and you can adjust it. But if you're using it on like a, a Sony or a Canon or something like that, like any of the TT artisans or Seven artisans, like that's that's not really a big deal. Um, but the thing would be, I don't know how incredibly like accurate all of the markings on here are. So like, let's say you set your camera up on a tripod and then you angle this down to exactly one foot away, as it says on like the hyperfocal distance thing here. Like, would that one foot be exactly one foot to calibrate that to a rangefinder? I'm not sure if that works. Uh, I haven't been able to test that yet. Um, so that is like another option you could try. But the problem then being like, you're doing it on film and then you're going to be wasting film if you're trying to test this kind of stuff out. So, you know, it's just a more expensive kind of more annoying option. So the option number three, if you have either access to ground glass or if you have just scotch tape um, is to take scotch tape like I have here on my Leica M6 and this beast of a lens. So this is the Seven Artisan 75 Noctilux, basically. So the 75 1.25. Uh, so I've taken some scotch tape to hold the back door open. And then I have some scotch tape on, you know, the, the um, over where, you know, the film plane would be. So what you do is you stick your camera on bulb. If you have a shutter release, that makes it way easier. I don't have a shutter release for this. So, <laughs> uh, and again, doing this on a tripod is going to be way, 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 way easier. But you have to set it down, open it up. And then what happens is, and I'll see if I can get this to, you know, kind of like show here. Obviously, well, that's <laughs> super out of focus. But the idea is with like the ground glass or whatever, you can go in and focus the lens through here and you can't really see because it's too close to actually focus, but you almost need like a microscope or something like that. Like if you had like a magnifying glass maybe, um, because I tossed the 75 on here and then did a little bit of a test um, you know, just trying to focus things on my desk and, and things like that to make this work. And it worked okay, but you're looking at, you know, like a 35 millimeter size negative to try to check to see if something is in focus here. And honestly, that's just like not a great, <laughs> it's, it's just not, it's not big enough for your eyes to really see critical focus, especially at, you know, like 1.25 or 1.4 or something like that. So it'll get you kind of ballparking and stuff, but honestly, I would say I probably would avoid buying these uncalibrated in general if you're planning on shooting them wide open at, you know, 1.4, at 1.25, at 0.95, at 1.1. I think those are all the main apertures for these. If you're going to use them solely on an M body film camera, I would definitely find access to a digital body. I think that's by far the easiest way to do this whole process is to get, you know, a friend or something like that that has an M240 or an M10 or some sort of, you know, actual digital body to easily calibrate it. Again, on my M10s, this took me, you know, three minutes per lens to do. Um, and this whole like scotch tape thing honestly just isn't that great. And so I don't know, like it works technically, but again, it's just such a small space, um, to see critical, critical focus on something, you know, that's super shallow. I know a few people have done that. I think Matt day has done it. Um, and then, you know, a couple other people I've seen do stuff like this. So, um, shout out to them for giving this kind of thing a whirl. But, uh, anyway, figured I'd give you kind of my two cents as this is, I think this 75 is my fourth of the seven artisans or TT artisans lenses. And again, I've had no issues at all doing this on a digital body, but after kind of pulling this up and doing 
trying it out on a film body, I just, I don't think I would recommend doing it. So again, find some, a friend of yours or something like that with a, you know, digital M uh, and go about it that way. Or just use them on a mirrorless camera like the Canon EOS R. I've been using this 75 on the EOS R uh, with an adapter and it's been working great. I had sort of low expectations for this lens and I've made some really, really cool images with it so far. So anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I know that it's definitely sort of a niche niche little topic, uh, but figured with the amount of questions I was getting about this, uh, I thought I'd just make a video and hopefully help out some people that are buying these lenses or considering it at least. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.